Hey everybody, this is Kasu and welcome to day 3 of Kanga week. So, uh, for day 3, we'll be going through Kanga culinary. And first, I have to say something, is that Kanga culinary has a lot of things that is affiliated or rather needs Kanga husbandry to work really well together. I will show you later, but first, what is Kanga hus uh, culinary? So, as the word culinary states it basically means something along the lines of something to do with food correct yes so uh in when you download kanga culinary uh you cannot basically eat your basic survival food like your cooked meat and stuff like that you can't just chuck a like this particular like slab of meat on a fire and just eat it because if you eat too much there are some diminishing defects uh for example if i were to do this to so summon a bunch of cooked meat at first when you eat it for a little while it's okay but after you eat a few more you get this particular thing and this particular title this is barely edible anymore surely i can find something more tasty yep so uh what it is is basically uh you are it, it's basically a debuff uh, which shows you like tells you that uh, this is a warning if you eat any more survival food basically cook meat cook prime meat cook anything without basically anything you eat without the kanga mod it will give you some diminishing effects and if you eat too much as i'm gonna eat some more you get this you will gain no xp basically uh once if you eat too like the, if the quality of food you eat are so bad, you actually will get some diminishing effect and this diminishing effect means that you cannot gain any more EXP whatsoever. But how do you start out or how do you prevent this from happening then? Well, this is where this particular cooking station comes in, which is the primitive cooking station. This primitive cooking station allows you to make bowls and marks and stuff like that, even though these looks like decoration, they are not really decoration as this particular campfire is the Kenga campfire. You you look for campfire in it. I have three different campfires. One is the S plus campfire from Structures Plus. The other one is the normal vanilla campfire. And lastly is Kenga campfire. You have to use specifically Kenga campfire in order to have access to all these different items. So all these different items requires uh rather all these different food is a uh, gruel, which requires oat seed. And where do you find said oat seed? Well, oat seed, if you see my previous video, uh, you just randomly click on like harvest a bush, you can gain oat seed. This oat seed is used to make gruel or basically this very early on survival game food. Or rather, survival game food. This very early on Kenga survival food. And you can obviously make uh, the different variants of it, like you know, have mushrooms, honey. Egg, egg is just you just chuck in any dance or any work, um, berry and stuff like that to make uh the gruel much more edible and easy. Now you know I'm wondering. Okay, so once I make my gruel, I can just eat it on the go, correct? Not quite, because if let's say uh I'm gonna spawn a gruel for me, uh in this case I'll make a meat gruel, and I were to want to eat it. I, as they say that your pawn must be, uh, I don't know why they say your pawn, but it should be your player, must be seated to eat this. So even if I try to eat it like that, they will say you must be sitting on the seat to eat this meal and you can fuck off. So uh, for early on, you have to make a stump seat around a little campfire, uh, but the seats are you know in a very different direction and only when seated, then you can eat your guru. And yeah, that's how you prevent yourself from getting that. As you can see, once I eat a survival uh, normal food, uh, I my buff is reduced from no XP to now it's just a warning uh, if I eat any more survival food. So the buff itself is actually, or rather the debuff itself is actually very easy to remove in this kind of situation. Just eat any uh, Kanga items or any Kanga foods. Next up is this particular structure, which is the smokehouse. The smokehouse is basically used to make smoked meat as this meat will last longer and stuff like that. Okay, unfortunately I can't really show you any of the uh, smoked meat because the spawn commands doesn't really work. But uh, let's move on to the next part. So with this primitive cooking station, you can make brew, which is depressing in itself. 
Uh, and are there any other food I can make out of it? That is where this particular things come in. So this is the baker's oven, the grill. Uh, this kitchen cabinet is just for decoration. And the advanced cooking station. So the cooking station, or uh, both cooking stations are actually crafted inside your inventory itself. So you don't need any other bigger structure to cook it. And in this advanced cooking station, you have a variety of items to work with. Uh, you need the Kenga chair, you can make the Kenga chair, the tablecloths to make uh, your table looks nicer and stuff like that. And most importantly, you need this dinner setting for the next part of the mod. This dinner setting is used to hold your food and stuff like that. For example, uh, if I have to open the inventory, this is to place your meal and drink before you can eat it. Now, uh, the most important thing about this mod is that it 100% needs to be used with... Hold on a second... Yep, it 100% needs to be used with Kenga Husbandry because there are no drinks in Kenga culinary mod itself. You have to pair it with Kenga husbandry in order to get said drinks. Which I'm gonna show you right now. But before I show you how to eat, uh, I will show you how where to craft all of these items, which is again inside the cooking station where you can craft the wooden dining set. All this stuff. And you have to sit on a table and on a chair and stuff like that in order to eat it. And now you'll be wondering a little bit, wow, Kazu, this mod seems like a huge hassle. Why do I even want to make it? It seems like after I move a little bit, my character will get hungry and I will have to eat something. And I have to actually, you know, put down a table and sit down while I'm out in the wild in order to eat something. So that's the thing. In When you download Kenga Culinary, the, your food drain actually changes. Your food drain will not drain as much uh, as vanilla is so uh, you don't have to worry about that and additionally if you eat certain tiers of food you actually gain a useful buff that will help you out on the journey which i'll show you how to create this tier food tiered food now so inside the grill you can create a lot of food you can make your drinks like hot coffee or hot cocoa you can make a the tier 7 food which is a small banquet which is enough to eat feed four people apparently. You can make takoyaki, you can make yakitori, you can make a uh, gas uh, gazpacho salad, you can make tamale, you can make bacon eggs. Basically you can make a lot of different kind of food. So if you want to know like oh what, what food you like and stuff like that, uh, you can go in and take a look around and find out. Now here comes the uh, buffing part. Oh, but before that, uh, I'll show you the baker's oven. You can craft all sorts of uh, pastries and stuff like that. Now I'm going to show you what is the difference between a tier 1 food and a tier 7 food. Uh, just to inform you first, brews have no tier. So they are like, you know, tier 0 or something like that. But let's start off with a tier 1 food. Let's, uh, you know what, I like myself a fish stir fry. So I'm just going to spawn one in. And for tier 7 food wise, uh, there's only one. So I'm just going to make a, I'm going to, I'm going to eat a small banquet. And before you can even eat this food, you have to make... A drink to uh, go with it as I'll show you later on why that is 100% needed so uh, I'm just going to go to my uh, little setup here and or rather I'm just gonna spawn in some uh, berry juice like so this ama berry juice so once you sit on the wooden chair with a dining set in front of you you can see at the top left corner dining meal uh, they'll tell you what to do and, and how to eat your meals even though it feels like you're a toddler but just go with it so they say press W to add in a food and a drink. So I'm going to add in this fish stir fry and this armor berry juice. So once the food is there, you get, there's this little mini game where you press whatever I key you want to ask, uh, whatever key that they want you to press, just press it. There so. And the reason why you need the drink is because at one point they require you to drink the food, uh, drink the uh, your drink. If not, you cannot proceed forward and you can't get the buff or eat, your, eat finish, your, finish your food. And once this little game is finished, you can see I gain a buff, which is a good meal. This well-rounded meal was tasty and nutritious. Your food will, re will reduce at a slower rate. Yes, all of this food will give a particular buff. 
uh, if you want to know what tier 2 to tier 6 foot the bus are, uh, you can go ahead and try out. But now I'm going to eat a tier 7 food. But to pair with, oh, hold on a second. To pair, and also uh, one more thing before I go on. You actually have to clean your table, which is just quickly and you pick up your water jar and wooden dish. And to pair with this small banquet, I think we need a much more expensive drink. Like this wine here, which I made from, uh, the, or rather I spawned in from the previous time I went through the Kanga Husband Dream mod. Now, let's go on this round table. Let's sit down. Okay, so sorry, apparently I can't pair the food with a wine. I thought that would be the case, but oh well. Uh, so that being the case, I'm just going to spawn in another berry juice so that I can deal with it. All right, now I'll put in the berry juice and I can begin. So as I start eating it again, I'll just hurry up and eat, finish this particular meal of mine. And there we go, we have a banquet meal. This exquisite banquet style meal was tasty and nutritious. Your food will reduce at a slower rate and you have a small XP gain for a long period of time. Yep, so that is the difference between a tier 1 and a tier 7 food. Also, uh, this was, I realized this when I, this is just a side note thing. I realized this when I drank the wine. I am, I have this buzzed effect which gives me buzz level 0. So, I, this is my first time seeing it out of curiosity. Let's see what happens after I drink a whole ton of, uh, wine as I'm just gonna just going to going to down down the hatch this up ah, as you can see it's starting I'm starting to not ah, I mean I still can walk straight I think I'm still fine you drink too much you, your damage is reduced water and stamina drain uh, will drain so that is your drunk effect and what if I drink some more do I get just hammered I guess not. So once you drink, uh, once you drink like you know, I think three. Once you drink three times, you will just basically have this drunken effect. And uh, just a, another small short warning: if you have these where uh food buffs, by the way, they do stack, so you can just have a whole entire tier of food buffs. But if you have this food buff, uh, you must be wary uh when you die because if you die, which I'm gonna show now, by removing my creative mode. And go inside the water and upping the speed to a hundred. And as I respawn, my full bars are gone. Yep. So your full bars will go away if you die. But this is where the game, or rather the mod, is a bit of a. It's a bit rough. As I'm going to show you, I'm going to spawn in a lot of normal meat. So I'm going to eat a bunch of uh, survival cooked meat to get this debuff. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, uh, I can just, you know, similar to the uh, food buff, I can just kill myself and reset this, right? Eh, not really. Because if you do die with this debuff and respawn, that debuff is still there. So this game or rather this mod is forcing you to if you want to uh you know level up and stuff like that, forcing you to eat or rather use their mod in order to progress further. So you might be thinking to yourself, alright, Kazu, then uh I will just you know keep the food inside my pocket. And uh, just, you know, if it decomposes, it decomposes, right? Uh, it doesn't really decompose that fast. So I actually have this small table set here where I have this, a cold steak and veggies. Basically, if you leave out the food for too long or once this, that spoil time, uh, that spoil time, which I'm going to spawn yet another food to show you, like this fish stuff, right? Now, once this 20 minute spoil time is reduced to zero, it won't become spoiled meat immediately. It will actually become a cold version of it, which will last longer, but you cannot eat it at all. You actually have to chuck it into this, uh, any like other Kenga campfire or this uh, grill 
and after a while, which I'm just going to wait for a bit, it won't take that long. Uh, just after a while, it will basically turn back into reheated, uh, or rather turn back into the normal steak and veggies. Uh, unlike real life, there is no diminishing effect from eating a reheated food, even though it technically will get drier. But that's real life. This is just a game. And as you can see, I have made uh, reheated the food. Now the sixth veggie is good for eating again. And uh, before I end off this mod showcase, I want to emphasize uh, one final time that this mod heavily requires uh, Kenga Husbandry to be played with it. As if you do not have Kenga Husbandry, you cannot one make any drinks for you to drink with the uh food uh with the food on the table meaning that you're you're stuck with eating uh you know gruel for the entire playthrough which is kind of sad and you also cannot get any of the buffs that this tier one to seven food have and two there are some food in the game that requires things from kenga husband uh, husbandry for example the bacon egg requires cooked fiumia bacon uh if i'm not wrong there's a whole ass bird inside the game too this rose bird requires a whole ass rose bird which is obtained from butchering a dodo bird uh from in from kenga husbandry if you want to know how to do that you can refer to my previous video on the kenga uh husbandry mod to show and it will basically show you how to use any every single thing from the mod or most of the things from the mod and that will actually pair really well or rather it needs to be paired uh, with Kenga husband uh, question correct and Kenga culinary in order for it to work really well with each other so that you can get the maximum buffs and stuff from the food source and with that I've come to the end of the Kenga culinary mod review I hope you guys enjoy this uh, so far as much as I am because I'm learning a lot of things from the Kenga mods as I really wanted to be like learn the learn how this mod actually works and make a tutorial for all of us or everyone on the internet to know and learn how to play it and with that being said thank you guys so much for watching i hope to see you guys in the next video or stream hope to see you guys tomorrow actually for kenga day four bye